as far as uh, this question is concerned, Sandeep, because you're talking about the denim industry, and denim industry is so all-encompassing, right from, let's say, the fibers, the yarns, to the manufacturers, to the distribution, to, to brands and to retail. So uh, there's a huge amount of churn that the whole industry uh, will go through, and every part of the industry, starting off with retail and we seeing what's really happening in the, in the industry. How are the weaker ones really, really sort of going through a lot of aggravation, a lot of chapter 11 uh, going, uh, going through. And the fact is that with, uh, uh, with, with so many distractions that we've had till now, not distractions, alternate options for consumers, which is right from, let's say, uh, holiday to, uh, to, to, to eating out, vacations to, to cell phones, continuously apparel, including jeans, has you know have been losing share to these you know, to these other industries. So, to be honest, I think uh, as an industry, apparel industry in general, and denim industry in particular, uh, has got a breather for some time to come. People will not be able to travel. Uh, people will not be able to sort of you know go to restaurants or less going to restaurants. So that 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 corpus is available or that money is available for the consumers and let's say jeans uh, the unit cost of jeans being low uh, it's about instant gratification at a low cost right so i think a very interesting point stefano and uh, the biggest fallout that we have seen uh, in the supply chain of the current pandemic is is the is the problem of cash flows all across right everybody and i think the biggest source of this cash flow problem has been the inventories. So it's the brands, it's the retailers, it's the supply chain, which is holding on to large inventories, right? And which is driving this whole cash flow, cash flow problem, which is driving the chapter 11 discussions and all those issues, right? Now, the thing is that the, the model itself, I mean, the current model in our industry is sort of, you know, the way it is uh, about, you know, almost about a year or 12 or 14 or 16 months in advance, you're expecting some people to take a decision on behalf of the consumer as to what is he going to buy. Right? Now that's unfair, it's impossible, it is impractical, right? It's, it's just not possible. So, so you know, thousands of people trying to take a call on behalf of the customer as to what is he going to buy and taking those, you know, taking those calls and judgments and producing goods in advance, way, way, um, years in advance, year in advance or months in advance. And expecting those goods to sell. So I think that's where the fundamental problem is. And possibly, I don't know, and it's not going to happen overnight. It's not, it'll not be a sort of, you know, it'll not be an event. But as a continuum, I believe with, with this with this experience, uh, with this very sort of you know unfortunate experience, possibly one can see a shift in the business model of the industry. So at times, say for example, if you see the automobile industry, right? Uh, with whatever has happened to, you know, with the likes of Uber. Uh, the industry itself has got disrupted where from owning assets, right? You're moving into service. People are realizing that, no, there are assets that can run and deliver more value. So rather than you own assets and it's more convenient, it is less cost. So in, in our industry also, possibly, uh, there could be this, this shift towards, uh, towards full-based uh, supply chain. Right now, it's all being pushed. So you're manufacturing, you're deciding, and you're, and you're, and you're pushing things to stores and to and to consumers, and then finally it doesn't sell, and, and it ends up in the landfill, as you've so rightly said. Possibly, there's a case for a you know full-based industry, and it's power to the consumer, so it's mass. All the things, cool things that we've been hearing about till now, and we thought that they're very in the realms of of, of uh, let's say um, hyper, you know, they, they are they were more hypothetical, but possibly one is seeing that there's value in this, where uh, it's mass customization, it's 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 uh, it's, it's manufacturing uh, to uh, you know to the requirements of the consumers uh, rather than taking calls on behalf of the consumers. And today there are technologies available where you know you can produce just one unit, right? So you don't have to produce millions of yards of fabric and stuff like that. So possibly uh, you know one could see a shift towards that direction. I think the industry shall be embracing um, the concept of reducing and reduction without creating extra damages. I know what I'm saying is not gonna be very popular or 
maybe doesn't make sense to most of uh, the textile um, entrepreneurs, but it is quite obvious that this break, let's call it a break, that uh, most of the world uh, took lately, I mean, the planet has appreciated that. And not only the planet, I think the markets will appreciate that. Now, reduction is something we should consider at this point, because we all know that pretty much till yesterday, we've been overproducing, we haven't been producing. And yeah, we've been forced to reduce. And today, I think you can be a very successful businessman if you think the other way around, which means try to be successful by reducing. Do less, do it better, try to stay competitive. Most of all, try not to kill jobs. So I think this mindset is a, is a new type of mindset which can be appreciated by the, the end consumer. Quality can be appreciated by the end consumer, which I suddenly call a citizen, even though this quote, I, still, I stole it from Maurizio Donati, who's gonna tell you more about the difference between the, the end consumer and the citizen. And he is totally right about that, but I leave it to you, Maurizio. And uh, yes, so I believe um, reduction and um, again, um, um, yes, re how to embrace reduction and then how to restructure because if you do less and you do it better, eventually people want more and then you can grow again. But it's a very, very tricky, it, it's a very, very tricky matter. And again, uh, it will take a little while to adjust. We know we're adjusting to a new environment. Adaptation is, you know, humans top. A notch characteristic. Uh, let, let's do that and, and let's not try to go back to the old normality. The old normality wasn't great. I mean, if we have the opportunity to create a new normality, let's do it in a positive way. And again, let's try to be very conscious about, about ourselves, the planet. Uh, we're talking health, you know, health uh, in this case, you know, relates as much to you know, humans uh, as much to the planet. And I think this is really changing the industry going going forward even in products even in consumeristic behaviors but yeah i think embracing reduction is actually the most challenging uh, aspect I, I think the the way forward for denim is really about uh, transforming resetting deeply understanding that consumers really we all fall in love with denim as consumers i think there's a really visceral a way in which we connect to denim as, as a market. And I think that's why we are so privileged to work in this market in which denim is such an important part of what we do. And I think uh, uh, we were discussing earlier and uh, Amir was mentioning and then uh, Alberto also the issue of consumers and how we connect there. How do we keep that? And for, for many years now, I think our we have been, as an industry, uh, not performing that well. I think we had distanced ourselves, uh, increased the length of supply chains, disconnected from the consumers. In many ways, it's almost crazy making to think that we can figure out what consumers want 12 months in advance. I think there needs to be clarity about how we create postponement strategies, how do we integrate better, how do we make a more fair collaboration between supply chain partners? I, I think that we are seeing unfairness as, as this crisis is unfolding. It's a terrible crisis, but there's some fairness that needs to get back into the game. And one of the things I believe is that we are, today have extraordinary tools that we don't use enough. I think digital, in integrating from a digital perspective is gonna make more sense than ever. Uh, the, the consumer today understands the world differently, sees the world differently. We still spend tremendous amounts of money developing with physical samples, making DHL and UPS and all of those guys millions upon millions of dollars when we could be collaborating significantly more uh, on a digital platform and then bringing things to market faster, uh, working to really understand how we each add value. I, I see a world where uh, denim mills like, uh, like Arvind and, and Candiani 
push for factories to understand their product better and really do beautiful product that connects with consumers almost instantly and work with, with brands. We have a now digital platforms that will allow this. Uh, this collaboration should be happening more. And I think we, we, we are in a good moment where we need to, to think about that. And I completely agree with Stefano's point about less and about reducing, reducing the use of chemicals, reducing the use of water, reducing our footprint in this world. And, 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 and we've talked about sustainability for a while. I think more people are understanding why it's important, but it, we have to be really clear about what makes a supply chain sustainable. Um, so I think, I think that um, Dick's acceleration um, was already um, in the making. Uh, the virus has basically destroyed any, log any logic to our industry and gave us, uh, you know, and, and I say that with all respect for the people that were affected by the virus physically. I mean, uh, um, uh, and, and uh, I would say that um, we have really an opportunity to start fresh. And I think that uh, it is true that we have the knowledge, the technology, the experience, the desire of fixing this industry. And um, we have the capability of re-engineering, in, particularly in the world of denim, what good denim is all about. And um, um, in the name of uh, global domination, we have designed and made horrible products and I think that needs to stop I think that the idea of reducing intelligently designing differently and selling in a way selling with honesty I would say instead of selling with a price point and uh, and I believe that we will all benefit and the people that will benefit the most will be the citizen of the world, which should know about trends and stories and point of views and opinions, um, because that's what globalization is. Globalization is a free sharing of ideas. Uh, now with the digital world instantaneously. At the same time, we need to recover from this madness from this situation locally, as Carlos said. I think there is a, an incredible opportunity for a, a, the, the return of the made in Italy, the return of uh, made in the uh, in US, the, the return of the made in anywhere, made in India. And the competition should be in improving greatly the way we, from design, from concept all the way to execution, there is an opportunity to really re-engineer all of this. And, um, you know, I am not in the business of producing and making, I'm in the business of transforming what already exists. So I am, I would say, the spectator of a lot of the mistakes that brands have made. And I can tell you that, uh, that uh, and I think it's public knowledge, that, that we, we, we have to stop thinking about people as consumers and customers. And we have to start thinking about people as citizens and knowing that they will vote your company or not according to the honesty of your story. And I think that the story is more important at time, more important than the product. Maurizio, I mean, uh, one of the key problems we face in the industry is that, you know, the story telling to the consumers, that's the most difficult part. And, you know, there's so many stories going around. So which story the consumer has to believe in? That's the most important thing. Yeah, so storytelling is a marketing tool that, uh, that make you enamored with a company that do not deserve to be bought. And I think that's, that's the science of marketing, which is no longer a support for beautiful product, 
but it is intellectual terrorism in, in, in creating chaos and desire for things that we don't need. And after six to eight weeks of isolation, we, I think that we know pretty good what we need in life and what we don't need anymore. And we will be able to vote about food, about homes, about people, about uh, goods, and ultimately about denim, because that's what is needed. Is It's the rethinking of our life and the new reimagination and the new, a new um, building of our lives uh, starts from a very um, difficult time. That's when people are the most effective and, 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 uh, and, and, and when the innovation starts. Innovation in, in good, but innovation also in the way we think. That's the gift, sorry, the gift that we got from this bloody virus, is that we had for the first time, time to think about all the things that are wrong and all the things that are good and important to us. And um, denim being the mo one of the most democratic house for your body, that we have an opportunity to really make it useful, utilitarian, beautiful, sustainable, traceable, long-lasting, long best product we can ever make. And now I think that the citizen will understand the effort. I wanted to just comment quickly uh, after Carlos that um, oh, about what Carlos was saying is that I think for the maker of fabrics and the maker in general, uh, it is about evolution, while for brands, it needs to be a revolution. They, they truly, brands truly need to conceptualize their, their brands, their, their, their product line, um, design a lot less, design with a lot more expertise, because you, you have been producing product for designers, for brand in general, that did not have uh, the knowledge and the experience of designing right. How many times I went to factory where the workers were laughing at the way things were constructed because the design was wrong to start with. How many times was that happening? And, and I was spectator of it. So I know that there are also, of course, amazing designers and, and so forth. But you know what? What is what is design for denim? So I and and I and I think that that the design process today in big company it's also considered a cost. So being a creativity is a cost for large corporations that are dominated, all the decisions are dominated by supply chain, which their only interest is in the status quo. Right? They don't want to change anything. They, they, it took them 30 years to build their books. And we are telling now that they need to change the books? Well, my answer would be absolutely so. Now or you're gone in two or three years. Or be happy to be one tenth of the revenues that you are you were generating pre-virus, so I think that that's the the wake-up call is for brands which needs to revolutionize the method from design to execution and 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 the commerce of it, and for the industry of for the manufacturing industry to evolve because the needs now are different. You know the way, the way forward. This this question made me really uncomfortable because you know as they say forecasting is very difficult especially when it involves the future um right before getting into this call uh, we had another call with you know the uh, management director of of the company trying to figure out what the rest of 2020 was going to look like and you know that was not an easy exercise at all um i think the only intelligent way to try and forecast the future is, is to observe the present. I, I tend to think that the near future of, of the denim fabric is bound to the near future of the 
of the social okay, the citizen, as Maurizio calls it. Um, what, what I see is that the pandemic has been a, a reality check for a, for a critical mass of people, and in many different ways. Um, I feel personal values have, have slightly shifted in some cases, and people after a couple of months of lockdown have realized that, you know, you can really live with much, much less. Okay, and now we, have, we are going back to basically what we, have, what we were saying before. Now, I don't, I don't really want to go down a, a negative spiral, but in addition, we read that there are like 20, 30 million or newly employed, um, employed people in the U.S. only. And thinking rationally, I, I really don't think that buying jeans with the latest trendy wash is necessarily going to be at the top of everybody's list moving forward. Um, uh, if we know the history of our beloved blue friend, you know, Denim, um, we know that Denim has always supported the needs of society as, as workwear first, symbol of, re of rebellion during the 60s and 70s and later as a, as a fashion statement. Now, the way forward for the denim industry, if you ask me, is, is being able to read what, what consumers, uh, what citizens, people really need from them. Sustainability remains of major importance. Um, and, and there are like titans of our industry represented here by Genealogia, Candiani, Arvin, that have done monumental work on sustainability. Um, Sustainability today is, is, a, is a ticket to play, and it's more of an expectation from, from consumers than, than a reason to buy. The, the role of denim as item that supports the wearer across different wearing occasions is probably more of an opportunity. I tell you, I tell you one story. Our production in Germany um, of, of chemical auxiliaries is booked throughout July for this year for the production of auxiliaries for textile that provide functionality, not fashion, okay? And to me, that, that's a big symbol. Well, I, I, think, I think the point has been uh, quite well discussed already by my, my colleagues here. We need to look at uh, reduction of quantities. We need to really look at the, the value priority for, for all of us. And, uh, and I think that's going to change uh, quite dramatically the way, the way people buy and uh, not only what they buy, but why they buy, how they buy it, where they buy from. Uh, so the the whole thing is uh, is pretty much going to be going to be different. One day we'll uh, we'll wake up from the nightmare and we're going to find a very different uh, very different world. And it's it's actually up to us to make sure that it is a better world. Because going back to to the way things were is not is not something we should aspire to. Because normalcy, the, the old normality, is what got us in, into this mess in the in the first place. And so we should really, really take this opportunity to, to really clean the slate and start all over again in, in some shape or form. I know, I know it's uh, utopian to, to think that we can uh, reinvent the whole, uh, the whole planet uh, overnight, but, uh, but I think there's a lot of things that we can, that we can do now that we know, now that we know better. And um, I think, this is also like some of us were saying this is basically accelerating a process that was already already on its way we we are very sad to see a lot of big retailers going under now there's going to be more and more bankruptcies there's a new one every day now but to be to be absolutely fair and objective we had the uh, way over capacity of, uh, of retail especially in the western world I'm not talking about emerging countries where it's still it's still uh, early days, and hopefully they won't uh, they won't follow our our mistakes. But uh, but we were overextended. We have way too many stores, and uh, more importantly, we have too many stores selling exactly the same stuff with no differentiation. When the only differentiation is I'm trying to be 50 cents cheaper than you. That's not differentiation. That's just me trying to screw my suppliers more so that I can uh, they can try to keep my margins. That's not that's not a sus sustainable business. Sustainability is about the planet, but it's also about the people and it's also about the profits. And if you don't look at all the three elements, you really have nothing. So I think at the end of the day, it is a, as horrible as this is. I think this is a wonderful opportunity for all of us to. To start fresh and start doing things, uh, do things better.
And, and I think there is, there is a general misunderstanding as what design actually means. Because to most people, and unfortunately even in our industry, the designer is just uh, the guy who has to, or the girl who has to just make it pretty and make it nice for the customer. When it's completely, a complete misunderstanding, the design process is what actually determines the whole life cycle of the of the garment. If we if we took more attention in the design process of uh, of our of our garments, the whole thing would be much easier. Because right now, even with our best intentions, you have companies that try to overnight they say, "Oh, now we're going to be sustainable." So they look at ways on uh, how they can uh, God bless their souls, how they can minimize the the footprint. But they're trying to to retrofit something in a process that is not designed for that. So the right, the right approach is actually to, to take a look at the whole life cycle of the, of the garment from the get go and say, this is where my garment is, or oh, Alberto is going for a walk. The, the life cycle of a garment, and this is what it's going to happen to the garment at the end when, uh, when people stop using it and what it's going to, what it's going to go, how it's going to be disposed. So you really have to look at every single single step and say, let me look at the raw materials that I'm using. Let me look at the, the yarns. Where is the cotton coming from? Where is the, the dye stuff coming from? Which factor is going to make it? How they're going to make it? What is the most efficient way to, to avoid waste of fabric? What kind of chemicals can I use to reduce my, my impact? What, uh, how can I make sure that the packaging does not uh, just end up, uh, end up on the shop floor? And uh, how do I make sure that the garment at the end of the day, when, when it's exhausted it, its uh, usefulness as a garment, maybe it can be, can be used again for something else or be recycled or be upcycled, downcycled, uh, or somehow avoid it going into, into a landfill.